Welcome back. Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward were two Hollywood icons who shared a rare 50-year marriage. Their real-life story, just as captivating as the decades of performances in movies and TV and on Broadway. Well, Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke is the director behind the epic six-part series, The Last Movie Stars. It uses transcripts from lost Paul Newman interviews, and it illustrates the couple's incredible story. He casts some major A-listers to narrate the project, including George Clooney as Paul Newman. Take a listen. The glue that held Joanne and me together was that anything seemed possible. With all other people, some things were possible, but not everything. The promise of everything was there in the very beginning. Okay, uh, Ethan, welcome in. This project is so unique and epic, I feel like. You had a treasure trove of interviews that came from transcribed tapes. And basically, the Newman family, Newman's daughter, came to you and said, Here's, here's my parents. Please make something with all this. I know. It, it felt like a giant responsibility. I mean, I really was desperate to say no. Yeah. You, you know, because I knew how much work it would be and what a huge responsibility it would be. But I'm too much of a sucker. <laughs> I'm, I'm a romantic, and I've, I grew up loving and adoring them. And I felt like people were kind of forgetting about what a miracle they were, what amazing artists they were. They lived substantive lives. They were good citizens um, mm -hmm. of the world and the community. They took care of each other. And it felt like a great moment to say, no, it can be done. It you know, can it can done. be done. We can love each other. We can take care of each other. We can live good lives and we can have a great time while we're doing it. Well, we learned so many things in this. Number one, when everyone thinks of the two of them, we think of Paul Newman as the big star. But that wasn't how it started, was it? He was her, her boy toy boyfriend at the beginning. You know, I mean, she was she won the Oscar. She was heralded as, you know, Hollywood's shining light. Three Faces of Eve blew the world away yeah. as, you know, as a young woman. And it took him a little longer to find his stride, mm -hmm. you know, but shortly after they married, then The Hustler came out and his career broke and then he blew up. You know what I love about this? Because we hear about the love story of Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward and you actually hear it in their own words. I mean, these are these are tapes. They've done lots of audio tapes that were transcribed. Yeah, they were. Newman was trying to write a memoir. And so uh -huh. he and Joanne hired their best friend, who's named Stuart Stern, who he wrote Rebel Without a Cause and a lot of great movies. And he was a really close family friend. And they did interviews with everybody in Paul and Joanne's life. And then Paul abandoned the memoir and abandoned the tapes. But I had, they, had, they had them transcribed. So I got my actor friends to read some of these, uh, to reenact these interviews. Wow. And I built the, basically the spine of the documentary is all these lost interviews of their closest friends talking about them. I thought what was fascinating about the memoir that Paul Newman was thinking about was, I didn't realize that Paul Newman had been married before. Yeah. Yeah. That he had a wife and a family yeah. when he met Joanne Woodward. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't know that their this beautiful marriage was born out of, you know, from scandal. Yeah. You know they, you know, but Paul's generation. It was a tough time. I mean, he came back from World War II. Yeah. Uh, he, as soon as he arrived, he went to do a play in Summerstock and fell madly in love. Yeah. And before he knew it, he had three kids with somebody he didn't know very well, and he still he was running a sporting goods store. And then that wasn't his true self. He wanted to be an actor and he wanted to be an artist. He moved the young family to New York, met Joanne backstage. They were both understudies, you know, around the corner from here on, wow. uh, on Broadway. And his life changed so dramatically. It, it, it was unrealistic to think he was going to, that it, you know, that yeah. something like this couldn't happen. Something could like this would happen. Yeah. When you think about him, he's known for those piercing blue eyes and that sex appeal. But it's funny that. I, he didn't think he was so sexy. We learned that. He says that, you know, Joanne created that image. And I really? think that what he means is he respected her so much and her confidence in him uh. kind of taught him who he could be her belief and they did that for each other you know he directed her in many many projects he, I mean they took turns nurturing each other um, you know who was the rose and who was the gardener uh -huh. so to speak you know? well I thought it was fascinating uh, Ethan just how revealing Joanne was revealing in those tapes about 
her reluctance to have children. She didn't think movie stars made good moms. Yeah. And she said the words aloud. I know, we're not allowed wow. to say things yeah. like that, even though we all think it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. But I felt if an actor was going to make a movie about actors, that we needed to tell the truth. And I think that Joanne, when she talks about parenting that way, she loved her children, and she loved being a mother to them. But I, my interpretation of her going all this is that she really wanted to remind young women what it was that they, they were giving up. That, that, you know, her life, she got strong-armed mm -hmm. into a certain lane. Yeah. You know, her whole dreams of being the movie star that Paul got to be were... They were really pushed aside, and that's what society does to a lot of young women. She was warning them, hey, before you go gonzo in love, be, be, <laughs> make sure you know what you're doing. And I think the end of their life was fascinating, that she had dementia, he, he had cancer, and yet in the, in the end, you know, she, she was distant from him because she didn't, I guess, you know, she was in that different state, but she ended up going to him in the end, uh, as, as her, their daughter described, and seeing him take his last breath. It's so beautiful. Um, it's, you know, death and illness is, is always strikes us as, as sad. And what this movie, what I really wanted to do is focus on their life. Yes. It's a life well lived, and their life together in their 70s was the best part time of their wow. life. She's running a theater company. Yeah. She's really her fully realized version of herself. They're giving away hundreds of millions of dollars. He's doing Color of Money, Verdict, Nobody's Fool, some of the best work yes. in his life. And when you think, you know, right around the corner from here was is the actor's studio. And <laughs> Paul Newman, Joanne Woodward were in class there with James Dean, Marlon Brando, Meryl Crazy. Monroe, and when you look at their peers in their 70s, yeah. were not yes. in full blossom yeah. the way Paul and Joanne were. Well, Ethan, this is an incredible project. It is unique. It's all by itself. You have George Clo Clooney, uh, Lara Linney, and so many others. Congratulations on this. We encourage people to check it out. Yeah, I'm grateful to all my friends for helping. I'm so grateful. Oh, thanks, thanks for having me on your show. Oh, you can check out all the episodes of The Last Movie Stars. It's streaming this Thursday on HBO Max. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.